be just like normal crickets. I took a vacation last week, I guess. But it's actually societally represented that we are taking a vacation against something we were supposed to stand up against, and that was the tyranny that we see and we complain about. This will be BTW RLM 303. Week after week, I come here to explain it. I know people are probably tired of hearing it. We go through and show the myriad ways that it's all a mess and how to, I, res, I think I'm maybe the, one of the few people that show in multiple ways of how to address it. And very few people have the interest to step up. And I'm really starting to believe that, as I said before, we're not going to do this. They're, they're going to have their way with us. They, these people that just keep getting in the way that we were supposed to stop. And we haven't. And this was like a participatory in government. And along the way, people got, got started looking at it and said, well, we can, these people are just willfully ignorant. They're dupable as well. They really rest in their lesser capacities. Apathy is one of the things they reside in, and we're going to take advantage of all that. And so men and women didn't step up like they were supposed to. And what's amazing to me is how men and women will complain and not want to follow through. They'd rather, again, get in with the bed, breads, and circuses, even though what comes through is breads and circuses. <laughs> it's just um, the answers. The people that are supposed to be the things that they thought were good or that they just want to rely on are in themselves breads and circuses while they're saying that they're doing something, and no one's doing anything. And I, again, I just sit there and I think about that. I just want to stop talking. I just want to stop talking. And then I... As soon as I say that, I, re I just realize that there's, again, a couple things, a couple things I see, a couple things we do, slowly making a change back, slowly re recreating the example that we were, how it was we lost it and what it takes to hold it, and what it then takes to keep that republic, if, if, for those of you that have a aversion for that word, and even the, the question of that, I mean, there's all kinds of republics, but the one that we have in the United States of America, and in particular, the the preamble they throw out was the thing that we were supposed to keep and then relating back to the organic document in the Declaration of Independence why a people do what they do against tyranny, essentially. And that's the point. That you have to do something against tyranny. And since we haven't been so um, diligent and responsive to that, what's been built up around us is pretty astonishing. And what's this, what people do with that is pretty astonishing. And how people continue to gab about it is, is pretty astonishing. And what they gab about about that is pretty astonishing. And I just uh, look around and I say, but you know, everything I hear is just not conducive to what they're what the, the occupier is telling us. Whether that occupier comes through a, a, a power that's actually authorized in a constitution, or whether it was trapped up inside the country and infiltrated it like a cancer all over the country in the United States. And it did this all over the place with its rule of law. So what I, what I say for the United States, because I'm familiar with that somewhat, is applicable in the rule of law as a rule of law conduit to every other country that supposedly enjoys rule of law. But remember, your civil rights in the United States of America, as statutorily written, is to enjoy extortion, wrongful extortion. And I keep pointing this out, and I keep pointing this out, and I just don't know what people look at it. Some people look at it, and uh, they take, a, take it to heart, and they start to re re realize, uh, re reorganize how they thought things were. A lot of people just dismiss this stuff. I don't know why, but they just dismiss it. You're built into a condition, a prison, a servitude, a beast of burden. It's all written down. All you got to do is look at it. Then the next question is, now what are you going to do about it, if anything? And if you're not going to do anything to stop it, then what's your complaint? And that's why, I guess if I have a gripe, that's what it is. I hear lots of complaining, and nobody's really working out how to work it out, how to stop this thing, how to make an example, a record of things to stop for people so they stop looking everywhere else. In a fascinating Twitter, uh, somebody came out and put the guy's name, don't know anything about him. And it's, I look at these people as cliques now. They're like cliques in a high school or junior high school or whatever. They come out talking about, well, how about we get back to reality and come up with some real real solutions to this? And I said, good idea. 
I said, but let me explain something. I've been doing this for 10 years. I explain, I give a dose of reality every week. I explain remedies against the problems, and people would prefer the breads and circuses. And do you know that I didn't get a response to about anybody? One, one other Twitter, somebody out there, I'm not even following me, only one responded to that. And then people wonder what the problem is that we're looking at. They only go, people will go to a point and no further. They will not follow through with their own, what their intuition tells them has to happen. And it's reflected everywhere. I told you I've predicted all of this before. Not because I'm so insightful. It's just the way we are. It's just what people do. Dick Army standing in front of the car, the, the, the government, uh, the, uh, the Capitol building, talking about all those rights you're going to get. And nobody in the million, so-called million people that were standing and listening to him said, shut up, move out the way, we're going into Congress and we're going to order up what has to happen. Nobody. And so we're here today. Amazing. Amazing. So, as we know, because we don't stand up against it, we have a military consequence I can show you. It can be seen in the law. Whether or not you want to agree with it is really irrelevant. It's there to be seen in the law. Whether or not you want to frame what you see in the law as a military consequence of a, <laughs> globally, uh, that's all really up to, that's semantical at some, at, some, at some point for me. We either identify that's a problem or it's not. And, but uh, again, we're reminded, uh, so I, military to me is police, police is military, and there's policy. These are all grammatical extensions that you can see really, really quickly. The legislatures only make policy, police. It's all about this prison they put you in, you don't even understand it. All you patriots who you think you're standing up for some law, you don't even understand what you're looking at. Why do I speak so boldly? Because I've been looking at this thing for 30 years, and I can point my trace down, and I can show you how it's not anything like anybody seems to think. But I, I've told you long ago, and I haven't used this for a long time, but this came up to remind me again. These soldiers that you have out there, you can have be, uh, the phrase is, uh, you can be too intelligent to be a cop, and then remember, the Supreme Court made another, the other two, two de uh, de declarations that you can be too psychologically stable to be a cop. And there you have it, folks. That's your military consequence of what you're up against when you're going to deal with these cops that are actually imposing federal rule and underneath a consequence you have no clue about because it's, it's invisible to us. It's transparent to you, and you see that right in the Libra Code. And I'll, for those of you that haven't heard or don't understand how to connect this back or have heard but don't do it, all you have to do is go remember what I read to you about the, I think it was Andrew Johnson read the proclamation, and you look in there and you say, well, everything's under federal rule. He says right in there, Texas was coming into the fold. And so, therefore, with all their agents, their federal agents there. And then it was break, broken down into districts. And you're, all those of you that understand the 1871 law, that's your statutes. And I tell you, go read at, uh, 28 U.S.C., what, 81 to 132. Don't miss 132 or 133, maybe up to 135. Look at the notes. Go to Cornell. They give you the notes. You can figure all this out. A couple of you have. I appreciate that you did. It's an insight note. That's your 1871 law in work, and it tells you you have territorial districts. That's not Article Three courts. No, you complain about it. All you people who want to do it, you complain about it, but you don't work out how to get around this problem to find out there's another problem in there. Now we're treading on my territory where I've been. And it's gotten even more complicated as far it's not really complicated. It's gotten more diffuse uh, because of what they've done inside and who starts to protect who. The diffusion becomes finding out more people inside the system that are protecting this cr this cage that they built, this transparent cage they built around everybody, calling it uh, and then putting a nice little label on the front, and for calling it freedom and liberty, home of the brave, land of the free, home of the brave. It's home of the fee, tax home of the fee, land of the debt slave. And that's the financial side. And remember, they've broken this thing down in multiple places. In finances, they got ec you know, economic. Did you look at look at what they're doing to Venezuela? You'll see there's at least four distinct subject matters that they attack that are separate. 
And if you go look at what happens to Russia and how they deal with it, they'll tell you now, it's in the news. Well, we deal with business is different than politics. So we can deal with Russia on, on the business side, but politically we're going to crucify them. And when you're not picking up these details on how this condition is obfuscated to give the paths of, of tyranny through, through this, to justify those that have the power to justify their ability to continue, you're missing the whole point. And the, the crux of it ends up being this rule of law, because that's where it all comes and, meets and is decided. But in getting back to the enforcing side, the enforcement, the executive, executive expedience. You can too, you can be too intelligent and psychologically stable to be a cop. We have evidence here, right? Yesterday I picked this up. Uh, it, and this is really a, a bunch of notices to us. <laughs> be careful. I'm telling you, you don't want to confront these people in a wrong way, but here's the, here's the evidence of this fact. Not my opinion. The Supreme Court's determined this a number of times now. You can be too intelligent to be a cop and too psychologically stable. 24 year old U.S. policewoman fatally shot while playing Russian roulette. A police officer in the United States is accused of killing a, his colleague while playing Russian roulette. So that guy was a funny thing to me. They don't, it's not even Russian roulette they're playing. I've never known a Russian roulette to be shooting at somebody else. So what they did is these, these uh, geniuses modified Russian roulette, and they play Russian roulette, but they each point the gun at each other. And this is your cops. They say U.S. policewoman. Remember, that's the truth, but it's not true in law. There is no U.S. police. There is no federal police. But, in fact, when you look at the military consequence, there are. They're soldiers, and they're under color. Everything's under color. Everything's as law, like you have as money. It's not real money. It's not real law. And so we have a, the proof of it again. 24-year-old young woman, well, maybe young girl, I don't know. Maybe she wasn't a, Maybe she wasn't developed yet. Again, remember we were talking about they hatch too quick anymore? Here's, here's this 29-year-old officer and a 24-year-old, and uh, the 29-year-old shoots a 24-year-old on a game, playing a game of Russian roulette. Where are, where do these people come from? But these are the cops that are running your life. So if you think they can play Russian roulette and think it's a game against themselves, what do they think they're going to come when they come looking for you? Right, wrong, or indifferent? Now, another thing in the news is we're moving along here, uh, the notice to us, and we now heard that the uh, st there was that stalemate for the shutdown. We've heard the stalemate uh, for the federal shutdown, and we talked last week about this. Another article comes up here I want to point out. This is to be careful for you folks that are getting onto the websites. Again, this is another Achilles heel to all this digital stuff. The mother of all ga government data breaches is happening right now. And this is another report. I wanted the problem here is that the during the time that the shutdown happened, websites have these uh, SSL certificates that need to be updated because the uh, non-essential people uh, were not working. Those a lot of those certificates are not been updated, and therefore they're not secure. And so they offer a problem for those of you that are putting uh, contacting those websites and putting any private information. So I guess this is a be careful as you're doing that. Now remember that when the government shut down, federal employees were grouped into two categories, essential and non-essential. The non-essential employees were sent home and told to wait it out with a warning that it's actually against the law for them to even log into their work emails. The essential employees, meanwhile, are inexplicably forced to keep working for no pay which is something that was supposedly outlawed in the land of the free back in 1863. He's a poet and don't know it. About half of all federal employees, it turns out, are non-essential, with, with more than 380,000 waiting at home for the shutdown to end. Now, I, my whole point here is not even to read, read this, this, this statement. There's, there's things in here that people, I think, miss. And I keep asking you, and I talk to you all the time, back in Lincoln's time, 1863, also happened to be the time when, uh, when Francis Lieber made his code that was adopted as an instruction, uh, to the which is considered the law of war, which turns out to be international law a number of years later, uh, the land of the free, uh, back in 1863, folks, I told you, when you look around and don't see the land of the free, why do you consider you still live in the land of the free? 
and, and that being the case, it was due, you were duty and obligation under all under all understandings of interaction, a man's interaction with men and women, required you throw that off. When you don't see the land of the free, why do you keep? Why do you just complain and not do anything about it? So my point here is, was the essential non-essential? Remember, we showed you. I got to be careful on this article. I'm not really underwriting the totality of this. The uh, the that there were non-essential essentials were kept. Remember, TSA was apparently working for no pay, and yet they had a contingency plan when no when those essentials weren't enough, which means they were not essential either. And that's what I talked to you last week. The thing about the land of the free back in 1863, remember 1868, they brought your civil rights in. And what was that? That was the right that all of you all would uh, enjoy wrongful extortions of every kind in the forms of pains, punishment, penalties, fees, fines, uh, taxes. That's your civil rights. It's not theft, folks. It's the law. Tax is not theft. It's your civil rights. I guess I wish people would get this. Uh, then hopefully do something about it because just knowing the thing doesn't mean anything, does it? I can know all kinds of stuff. So this uh, this was an interesting little designation, to my mind, to tell you, in the land of the free, if you don't live in the land of a free, maybe you got to relook at this. And and I tell you that the mind out of time out of mind out of mind of man says you have to throw off what occupies your your silence is your acquiescence. And how many maxims do people know now that they didn't know before that prove that out? And all I hear people is parroting that, but not taking the action after they see that against what they find they can't tolerate anymore. You go back and really look at what's going on, and you're going to be edu you're going to educate yourself to a whole other re reality. And the only thing I can see to do right now, and it's even reduced even further, is we just have to start being able to cite to the authorities, which is black and white, everybody wants to rely on, uh, notwithstanding the interpretation by the uh, interloping bar that do the rule of law, understand how to do that too, but uh, understand for ourselves what's going on and example that to, to others. And in this particular case, because I don't think the uh, baby boomers are going to pull this one off to rectify the problem, they're going to have to start telegraphing their note, or that what they uh, ask, I think, as questions now, because the ones that are down the path of Generation Z, as I talked about a couple weeks ago, they're in some serious trouble with all this. They're going to have to have these questions in their mind. You can give them to them now and not let them sit in the in the smugness of their of their innocent, immature knowledge that they think they know everything that's going on, and just keep these questions in them right now. Because I don't think those of us that are baby boomers, less than baby boomers, are just coming up into that, which is probably the majority of my listeners actually. Are, are actually going to pull this off and be the example we need it to be. And I'm hoping I'm wrong. Prove me wrong. Explain to me how I'm wrong about that, please. Just do that, and I'll be, you know, I'll, I'll take my my lumps about being wrong on that. I don't. That will not. That will be make me happy to do. But anyway, this uh, non-essential thing uh, you find out, land of the free, it doesn't exist, folks. These are we. This these things are telling us this, there's a misorganization in everything, and we sit quiet to it. In fact. It has a Stockholm Syndrome. Because of the TSA, people were working without pay. Think about this, folks. He's referring here, the uh, land of the free back. Remember, the involuntary servitude was outlawed and they put in the Constitution. But the problem was that no one started to look at what voluntary servitude could be and your consent and voluntarism into that. And as a voluntary slave, you have no protections. You'll do as you're told. And you see this right here. I don't. Well, I don't know what people are seeing. When I, I just, I'm almost shocked about this. Think about this: that people are ignoring in this that the folks, not none of these federal folks are. I mean, there's nothing in this that makes any sense. But the ones that were supposedly non-essential are ordered to work without pay. Think about this, folks. Where do you live when that's the case? Can't be what you've been thinking and told underneath your mythological land of the free. And, because, and there's a whole lot of subject matter authorities underneath how this all supports itself. And that's another thing I notice. People, um, uh, we discuss things and I uh, hear people talking or whatever. And the, the basis for what they use to try and uh, under, 
understand what's happening is is wrong. The again the different stated parts of law that they would use they confuse equity with the common law with uh, with legislative administrative people confuse this and it's made to do that. That's why I attempt to try and show you how you how you parse everything out, get everything confined to what it is. And when I've been able to do that here recently, and again, this is a long going learning process. The more I look and the more I read, the more I refined I look at things, the faster I'm able to put m multiple sections of, of codes together to show how things are supposed to be. In other words, listen, off, I'll go off a shoot, off shoot here. I've got to get back to the tabs. Like if you look at patents and you look at contested case versus code impositions, and I was just doing this for somebody here again last few days. I did some research months and months and months ago. I had to go back and retrace my steps because it came too fast. I just got the research, uh, the research because I had this, the, the presumption is the information's there, and I have to go research it out, not not searching it out. I got to research it because it's already been there, uh, and I'm listening to uh, Ron Stefan in my head right here about talking about he become a searcher. Uh, that's possibly true, but we're also dealing with things of existence, and we have to go uh, maybe seek them out, search them out, but it's actually just researching what's already there because we were ignorant of it. But getting back to the land thing, uh, found out that the statutes a long time ago, months and months and months ago, found the statute that says that these code enforcement, uh, these code enforcements are applicable to publicly owned property relative to the comprehensive plans that are required. Well, if that's the case, then they're not they're not applicable to patent land. Let's say private property, not private real property, which is put stated in that code. The point is that these codes are actually applicable to the government property, but nobody understands to go look to that section and write it down and make a simple thing. They'd rather go off on all these oh this is a UCC, it's Admiralty, it's this that and the other oh you don't have property, all this nonsense stuff instead of getting right to the point. When you live in a place when you don't have what you told, were told, you're either ignorant of your rights, the way I'm starting to see it, and you're ignorant of where it says that those rights are recognized, uh, or you are apathetic to the the imposition and you consent to this uh, this servitude, or you didn't do the third the third thing which is required once you did know, turn around and assert all that against you, as I keep telling you how to do that in a, in any particular. Uh, subject now. But getting back to this, where we federal uh, condition, you see that employees. These are this is a master-slave relationship. I've told you, I've talked about all this. There's nothing new. I don't think I've ever seen now for the last many years about what I've told you before and how it just keeps regurgitating in front of us and how we don't respond to it or respond to the things in the way that would instruct us that uh, as a voluntary servant servant. The voluntary slave in a master-slave relationship and employment, you don't get to say anything. And this was a big deal here for my mind that people are just kind of missing. They're going to talk about other things. Well, let's talk about the wall. Who cares, folks? I mean, they're, you're looking at a hot That wall is only going to represent the, the wall of a hollow vessel because none of the production inside and the wealth was protected by anybody that was in government and by plan. And I talk about all that as well and how this all works. But, uh, so in regard of the government shutdown, and now it's, it's off for three weeks, and, and Trump has done this deal where if it doesn't happen, he's going to resort to uh, Title 50, as I told you, folks. It's a, it's a military consequence. I don't even know what the question is now. Once he resolved to, to use Title 50, I don't even know what the reading for the shutdown is. And, I'm, and I haven't sent out a tweet back out to him, but I'm debating on this because everything you do has a consequence, and it, it's more than me that I'm going to be speaking for if I do this. But once he went to Title 50, national security, to build that wall, you didn't need to see any of this stuff. None. And so, anyway, looking at this story, at, at the government shutdown ending, uh, I... Just a, it was kind of a, a fun thing for me, a misunderstanding. When I quickly looked at a headline, I wanted to kind of pass on to you. Maybe it's funny to you, maybe it's not. It was funny to me uh, that the it was a title to a, a news story, and it said U.S. alligators go dormant, turn snouts up in frozen swamp. And the the, the Twitter tra trending terms were history with animals, and Trump caved, and uh, then I remembered Congress critters. What this? So at first glance, I'm thinking this: U.S. alligators go dormant, turn snouts up in frozen swamp. Was this was this going to be a story and a report about the government shutdown ending, and Trump caving to that? 
which is not necessarily the truth, but that's what the, the point here. This is the, 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 stay, the tale. But what the story actually was, was had nothing to do with the swamp in Washington. It actually has to do with ones in North Carolina where those alligators are going dormant because their, their ponds are freezing over, and they stick their nose up, and they freeze in place, and they go dormant. And then they, uh, there's a word for it. I won't get into all that. But, but anyway, I thought it was kind of funny. U.S. alligators go dormant, turn snout up in frozen swamp. I thought it was talking about the ending of the, at least the three-week uh, cessation of the, uh, the shutdown. Uh, but it wasn't at all. It was also another thing that came up, again, me just looking at some fun, uh, trying to see some fun in this nonsense. You know, like uh, last week, uh, last, last week's Freaker Ball, they talked about the doomsday clock and, and uh, brought up an article. And uh, the doomsday clock is close to apocalypse as it was during the height of the Cold War, a renewed nuclear arms race, rising greenhouse gas emissions, and the emergence of state-sponsored disinformation campaigns have left the modern world trembling here, I guess. And I wanted to know, uh, relative to nuclear war and uh, climate change, uh, with global, would global warming and nuclear winter, would uh, they balance out? What's the? We can turn that clock back, can't we? Global warming and nuclear winter would balance out, right? I'm thinking so. So again, this is all a bunch of nonsense. But uh, this is what. I mean, how else are you going to take this stuff? Uh, they don't. Right in their own discussion, you see, you, you see the answers of nonsensity and the nonsensity of this nonsensicalness of this. Did I just invent another word? I don't know. Uh, so, nuclear war. It, it brings on the nuclear winter, right? And global warming should balance out. But one thing was pretty interesting and kind of neat. I, I still get into the neat stuff of the uh, wonders of nature uh, and the co coincidental stuff that uh, happens together. There is a question that maybe this didn't happen and it was all all uh, uh, made up, but I don't know. It was uh, the, the picture was originated, I think, by an amateur astronomer who pointed it out, and then it was verified. These were verified by then an, uh, an astronomer, uh, an astronomer's uh, by, with a telescope, and getting there all everyone saw it, but didn't everyone picked it up. It was uh, two meteor impacts on the moon during the super blood wolf moon eclipse, uh, within two minutes of each other on either side of the moon. Pretty neat. Uh, I, I'll go with the fact that it was done. Uh, it was captured by thousands, millions of people throwing their cameras and telescopes now on the moon while it happened during that that 43 minutes. There was two impacts by meteoroids, and uh, pretty neat. Uh, just uh, wanted to comment, if you missed it, maybe go seek out. i got a, a link on my Twitter that you can see the the uh, observatory put the two two impact times together. You see they're two minutes apart, and you can see the bright flashes. I, I did have a question on whether or not, you know, why, the, why the flash was quite so much, and I, I keep, my mind keeps going back to maybe an electrical discharge type of thing going on as well. Charged bodies coming in and discharging on the on the on the planets. However, it was just an interesting thing. If you missed it, if you're interested, I'd like you to maybe treat yourself to seeing that. What's the odds, folks, that the two meteor impacts and how many are going on all the time? If we if, if that was the case, we're not even told. But uh, another thing that came up on the on the um, the Freakers Ball was a story about uh, the guy who created uh, Davos. He was talking about the fact that we're in a war. Humans and robots are going to be in a war. And I just, uh, while, I, while he actually, when he was doing that, when Grimner was reading that off and talking about this robot that was serving coffee at Davos, I picked up on that story. And then he's reporting on the founder warns of a battle between robots and humankind. I'm also looking at a report here, folks. Maybe we don't have to worry so much. Now, remember, these things are not living creatures. They are me mechan machines, and this is what's being lost in all this. Uh, Japan's robot hotel fires over half of its bots after complaints, and so maybe there's a ray of hope here for us in the in the uh, robot apocalypse and uh, all the Terminator pictures or whatever those robots are. I'm seeing that come up now in the memes, uh, but, but don't worry yourself, folks. I think as I told you before, unless those robots start making their their supply chains, like I told you, they, they, it looks like they're trying to do where the, ro the autonomous trucks deliver the goods made by robot, made by robotic uh, assembly plants that are put on ships that are uh, sent over. I've talked to you all about this, and they repair have repair shops for themselves. Once the once they have set up, once these artificial intelligence have given guided the man, guided man to program to be able to do all that, then maybe we have to worry that they're going to have non-stop repair conditions that they will get be able to fix themselves. But until then, 
the robot hotel has now fired half of its bots, which I thought was interesting. How do you fire a bot? You just unplug it, don't you? See, we humanize, you anthropomorphize all these machines, and that's going to be something you're going to have to tell your little ones, stop doing that. Stop taking your, stop looking at these devices and communicating them with like they're real because what's behind there is a, is a sentient being. It's probably the NSA or some big data listening in, and they're they're getting waiting for any little thing for you to say so they can collect you up and d diminish your, your your social credit. Uh, one thing now, moving from things that uh, we may not have to worry about uh, that are the apocalypse of robots against you, humankind. Remember, they always anthropomorphize everything. It's not humankind. Men stand up. Women stand up. Forget these humans. That is the animal in legal. And if you look very carefully, they really don't deal with man. In fact, if you look at some constitutions, they speak to man, but they won't speak to person where you have a remedy. So think about that one, too. Anyway, lots of stuff to say. I could go on and on. A lot of people I noticed, and thank you very much uh, for those of you doing the, the rebroads re or whatever on the, uh, and the repass and the re-mirroring uh, of the broadcast. Uh, I noticed some people saying that there's more to say. Yes, I'm just doing you a thumbnail. There's so much more to say on all these topics, and I appreciate that feedback. I just can't get to it all. In fact, I can't get to all my tabs every every week. And so the robot apocalypse may maybe half strength already, folks. So let's not get too lost in that. And I guess I say that because we need to push back, push away from this uh, this nonsense that's being foisted upon us by these. You know, Davos is the central hub of the policies that are coming on us. That the any you call them elites, they're not. They're, these are just people in positions. This, uh, the, the psychopaths that have created a condition that they figured you out, they figured out your system, and they figured out the lines of communication on how to effectuate things, and you were never there to interfere. And that's the only thing that's going on here. But uh, for those of us that are, you know, we don't have to worry about the being affected probably by robots that are not really going to go anywhere for a while unless they can fix themselves on the fly and fix. They also have problems within the so-called AI. I tell you, it's just a machine. Uh, they don't respond correctly, and this is the name. We're already talking about putting them in places where they're making decisions, folks. Please get, get involved somewhere to find just write letters and, and, and give facts to people that say, "Listen, you, you you literally have to be out of your mind to consider this uh, this this kind of a technology in a place where it needs uh, people to interact with themselves." Uh, but uh, so people interacting with themselves, you know, us growing up into being people. And we turn our medical profession into AI now. You know, you go to that committee that's going to, the doctor puts in a, a check boxes and then out from the AI comes your determination. There's still the, the transition between all this, uh, but the technology they bring on, and we hear about radiation technologies not being so cool. And again, all the long time, the industry doesn't want to do the test to show harm. Uh, it takes a long time because really no one really demands it up front to find out why they aren't looking at certain things. But for those of you uh, that are pregnant or know someone who's pregnant and about to get an ultrasound, that's some new information here for those of you, a shocker, the dangers of ultrasound. Now, what I didn't understand, because I thought this was literally just ultrasound, again, a frequency. I come from a technical background, so I'm looking at ultrasound. It's considered a frequency band. It's typically just above the ability for people to hear. Uh, 20 to what 60,000 hertz? I don't remember the number, but it's a it's a band, narrow band of frequencies. It's like what dogs can hear, but we can't. That's the frequency that they used to operate on. Well, I just heard read here that they're working way up in the megahertz, and so there's a report out now for those of you that are doing the doing ultrasound or thinking about it. Uh, in fact, you should get the link. You should read it. You need to go find out. Interesting. Uh, it's almost as tasteful to understand what happened, but it was something that did happen in China where they were going to have to have abortions anyway. They used the fact that they were going to have an abortion to do checks about ultrasound. You can't do this in about anywhere else except for knowing in this condition where they were able to check with the modern, they have to actually make this statement, it was a modern uh, China that did the check. It wasn't some ancient, you know, we're, we're dealing with rocks and sticks and stones. They, they have to qualify that China is able to look at this on some very high-level technology of looking in, to these things and the instruments and checking it. They found uh, tissue damage, they found system damage by very short durations of ultrasound. And the problem was, I mean, we're not into minutes, and, and, that, and it would cause damage uh, to the fetal tissues. And 
and so their their advice was don't get them certainly certainly do not do it just to know the sex of the child that was a, they called that entered for entertainment value uh, so I I read through this I read through some of the statements a uh, very serious situation the first evidence um, however they found it uh, again they were they knew they were going to take uh, the babies and and they used the babies they were going to take in China apparently from their their population policy and they did tests to find out whether or not uh, this ultrasound would alter the fetuses in fact they did a quote here commercial and educational fetal ultrasound imaging should be strictly eliminated ultrasound for the identification of fetal sex and fetal entertainment imaging should be, should be strictly eliminated for best early pregnancies avoid ultrasound and that was I don't if you're interested get the link check it out uh, this was the again all this time we didn't know and I, what I didn't understand is they raised to three to nine megahertz that's that's way up into again as you raise frequency you you affect smaller and smaller things and so anything that has a a nerve length or a diameter or anything that's within the wavelength or ha or resonant wavelength of a frequent of any certain frequency will respond and be excited or m moved or whatever by these frequencies and uh, as you get higher uh, frequencies it affects smaller and smaller things within and a fetus is very small so it's it's conceivable what all the, the component parts can be affected and apparently they are uh, it was um, Anyway, you know, how much do I talk about this? If you're interested in it, here's an article for the first, first thing I've known about any of this. Uh, the, the written down, and, and it may not be a popular place to go get a get a report, but if this is all you have, uh, then you again, as I've told you, how to apply it. You take this as knowledge now in the record, and say why. And you come to the United States or any other rule of law country, you say why aren't you now here's the basic evidence. What have you done to prove this? You prove this doesn't actually happen. Where's your test? But for those of you that are going to try this, you really need to overcome your entertainment value. Unless you have a very serious problem, you might want to read this and just avoid ultrasound at this point until you get better um, background information on all this. It, it's um, I don't know what to say. I'm looking at this stuff and I'm saying... Look at all the things that it does, and people are totally unaware, and this is medically allowed. I'm looking at, I'm looking at this thing. How much do I read to you all? Do you want me to read to you, or do, we wanna, do you want to take the responsibility? I mean, I don't even know what to say here. I'm, so much to say, so many places to go. How, do I walk, do I, you know, do I maybe insult you a bit and say, how much do I hold your hand while we do this? This is a technology that's hurting people. Anyway, I'll move on. I, I was going to read more, but I just can't. It's just uh, uh, you, sh you should be able to be grown up enough, mature enough to somebody's out there to pick up particular things and run with them and start to be an advocate for those that, that, that can't. And this starts to slowly, this thing is so far out of whack, it slowly gets that starts to true up what, what was supposed to happen. Another report I haven't had been able to get to for months and months, but uh, it's again, it's here to say, Dr. Tenpenny, we mentioned this before. I want to make sure now you get the link in a video. You can hear the doctor herself talking. The Infrix Hexa vaccine is uh, again been proven to be, <laughs> it doesn't even do what it claims to do, and it has 65 cross-contaminants from uh, other manufacturing lines as chemical toxins, unrecognizable macromolecules, various free bacterial peptides that are potential allergens and are capable of inducing autoimmune reactions. And folks, I read that. So how many things are we looking at in, in a lot of these, these so-called treatments that are autoimmune responses by the body to the, to the, to the trespass? And so here's just another link. This, this, those of you getting into the vaccines, to me, I've told you to say it again. I got to say this all the time. I don't know why we have to explain this. I'm not necessarily against vaccines, but you got to check it against the risk. That's how you do that. 
And uh, like antibiotics, I'm not going to tell you to take antibiotics, but you know, I wouldn't be here with, if it wasn't for an antibiotic. At the point I was required to take it, otherwise I'd be dead. I was required to take it, otherwise I'd be dead. That's your looking at the risk against the harm caused by the thing, and that's not what they're selling. And you have, they frame this di dichotomy against all of us and uh, anti-vax versus vax, and there's nowhere in between is your problem because that's the alternative dispute condition that they set up. These people know how to do this against you. So here's some more. The Infrix Hexa vaccine, I told you, these vaccines that have more than one are seriously th threatening. I told you this a long time ago. Did I have the proof? No. I could just read in the sheets, in the data sheets. I could read some of the science behind it. I could read, oh, again, lethal injection, the great work that Clint Richardson did. Uh, I, that's the one I was explaining to him, the Title 50. They have the right to harm you, folks, in Title 50. The same right that Trump has to build his wall, he, he, he tells us. He knows, folks. They knew exactly what the power was. They couldn't go find the money from an emergency standpoint under the power of war powers. If you don't live in the free home of the free and the home of the brave, I'm telling you, go look and see why they're using the, home, the, the war powers to get everything done. And maybe you don't live underneath that state anymore, and it's constitutional, which is the biggest tough problem. But do you all work, look at that? No. And if you do, do you understand how to parse that out, and it's still a question that I told you it is? And that needs to be, a, that's the one that needs to be attacked. Remember, the pretense or pretext. Is that the only way to approach this? Absolutely not. This is just one of the many things. Multidimensional war against us, folks. You pick, just pick a place and jump in. Don't wait around. Just do what you can where you are. If you don't see anybody to talk to, just focus in on what you want to do, and you keep moving along. And keep an eye out for someone to allies that you can work with. You're probably not going to find many uh, until there's more of us. Uh, we don't find many allies, but we hold on. We try to make everybody an ally, and those that won't, we don't let them get in our way, and we keep focused, and we keep plugging away, and you become an example as best you can to everybody else down the line. So here's the, those of you, and you may have already heard about this infrix. I did report about this in just a report and a story. But I had on my tabs, and it was down the road, a, a video you can watch uh, that, that was a thing. I, I had a Twitter then. It says, Vax, not Vax. This, this is a vaccine that doesn't do any immunization, folks. It's a bunch of toxic materials. It has these macromolecules, like Clint Richardson will tell you in his video, that are dangerous stuff, you know, human fetal tissue in these things. How can they do all that? Even though the law in Title 50 says you can't, because the government's got an exception. That's war powers, folks. You've been living under them your whole life. And because of that, I can look and say, we don't, because of Libra Code, told us back in 1863 when they still, when they made legal slaves, voluntary slaves, it said, you knows them when you sees them, and you knows they don't have to tell you that they're there. That put the scrutiny on everybody, uh, the obligation and duty of scrutiny on everybody, folks. And if you want to close your mind, turn around, put your head in that behind a woodshed bucket of sand, Acme bucket of sand, I don't know what to say about that. Uh, so anyway, vax, not vax. These vaccines are not vaccines. They're poison. They're, they're things. We don't even know what they are. We know they seem to be DOD funded, though, aren't they? Rick's. And they have this name on this RICS, this name is a trademark for GlaxoSmithKline who's supposed to contain uh, allergens. Uh, Coralva Coral 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 uh, found none of these antigens in the vaccine, and, but did find 65. See, the antigens are supposed to help you fortify your body against the the, 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 vir the virus or the, the disease, but they did find 65 of these cross-contaminant uh, cross chemicals and unrecognizable molecules and more, uh, and I put in this Twitter year, uh, months and months ago, uh, fraud, money for nothing, good, dire straits. So, yeah, little, can't do much on Twitter, ideas, I send, just try to send people ideas and hope they pick up on them. A lot of people don't appreciate a guest because I don't get many people follow, and I can't, again, as a, as open open notice to y'all, I can't follow anybody, I'm blocked by Twitter, apparently, I can't follow anybody. So I have a bunch of, of, bank, of uh, bookmarks that I try and go through periodically that I can't get to a lot. I don't have that much time. But So you'll hear, you'll see me respond to you period, very periodically, uh, and that's because I was able to get over and look real quick to see what any of you have, but I can't follow anybody. Anyway, I'll put out, uh, I hope, t 
little bits of my insight into these articles to highlight certain things to pick up where people can pick up and start to run with their with their ball down the, down the field or their baton or whatever it is that you, you find important. It's what I try to do on the Twitter and you know things that interest me a bit, although not it's not complete. It, it, again, it is what it is. Uh, so I mentioned the DOD involved with a lot of this, and a lot of these exemptions come underneath Title 50, and that's the war powers, and you live in that construct. People will, uh, will, will kind of deny that or look away or not even have an opinion. They just don't want to hear this. And yet it is. It's a military consequence. It's global, folks. That's all I can tell you. I talked about it last week with the five, uh, the broadcast on uh, the five-eyed uh, beast. Uh, it, it, it's, it's, it surrounds us, and we don't even know it. It's transparent to us. And here's another uh, article regarding these toxins, these things that are toxic to us that the medical profession, the FDA, which is the agent of the occupier, the agent of the military, even if it's not an occupier, the constitutional war power adherent, which is the United States government, uh, their their agents, which is a, a complete conflict of interest in my mind in any way, a uh, top FDA official blows whistle as agency approves drug ten times worse than fentanyl funded by the DOD. And this report, again, not to read it all, okay, they get funded because it's a DOD. And you see they fast-track it without telling you it's fast-tracked because it's the DOD. To me, this report was telling you not that they approved a ten times worse than fentanyl drug. It was that the DOD and the war powers gets fast-tracked because they need that drug for their soldiers. And your health and your well-being and your security in the regard of your life is second class, if not last class, your blood clot. So this is the, I look at these, these reports, I see the title, it, it tells me about all I need to know, but I apply it to something funded by the DOD in preference to your safety. Ha, for their soldiers, has to be the War Powers Action, and the FDA allows it. And you know you may not be able to fight that one until we, we destroy the underlying, if we could, under, destroy the underlying pretense that it's being used for. Again, I told you, they beat us to the punch, folks. We, were, we needed, I saw it coming back in, uh, well, as soon as the, the towers, as soon as they went and done it in, in 9-11. They, it was a foot race, and we lost that foot race big time, big time. And that's about the time that was fortified. Uh, they were starting to tell us it all, and I went to crickets. When the, when the proof for you all, when I could present the proof of that to you all, so you don't think I'm some lo raving lunatic, conspiracy theorist, whatever, there it is, folks. They're telling you this is what they're doing. And be careful. And also, I told you, they divide, they divide stuff out to give them an option like, a, oh, we can work with, the, with Russia for business. Oh, but politically, we're going to condemn them. This type of nonsense that goes on, and I'm not saying go condemn Russia. I don't know the, really ultimately what's going on. You're either going to work with people or you're not. I'd like to have everybody getting along myself. I'm going to try that excuse for a while. But they use this stuff to, to interfere with they split the hair so that they get to justify what they're doing. And uh, this constitutional war power is going to be a critical um, thing. I mean, we, again, remember, they removed all, all emergencies except for the Trading with the Enemy Act. That's in commerce, folks. And that's kind of focus. You can focus in on that as well. And that also ties you in, for those of you that want to think you know about admiralty and you want to go run from it instead of embracing it and go work like I've told you within the neutrality, uh, which is provided for, so you don't have to, it's not your opinion. Admiralty works through commerce as well. So you can see how they tie this up together so it's still within international provisions and it's within law, even though it's an abomination of what's gone on. And so we have to understand that before we're going to get anywhere close to, to getting, getting into it. So uh, the FDA uh, uh, funds, uh, I mean, excuse me, advances DOD purposes and doesn't, you're second class, your health and welfare is second class, and that's exactly what Title 50 says. They get to do that. And the exceptions, read it, folks. Don't take my word for any of this. Like, I, I can only say, like, like Clint Richardson in Lethal Injection, he was stunned when he read that in there. It turns out to make two parts of his video where he's reading right from the law, the part that says that man is an animal pest, and that at the end it talks about this exceptions. 
and that's supposed to be your government. But remember, you got civil rights. Pains, punishments, and penalties are part of your civil rights. And your taxes aren't theft, it's a civil right. It doesn't matter that it's wrongful extortion, because it's a civil right in the law, so-called. And how, how is that consequence? But from a military power, it has to be. And we found again, I'll just return, we go round and round in big circles. Our own mandalas, we make nice, frilly looking nice patterns, but we all come back into the same point. Lincoln killed the Union, folks. And there's a military consequence just by that alone. And when you stop seeing your republic, because you didn't keep it, Lever Code in Article 1 says, then you got, you're seeing what exactly you're up against. And yet we would claim otherwise. Oh, it ought to be. No, it ain't ought, it's what it is. This is the, the word ought was the disempowering thing in the Declaration of Independence, but it is a good point for sentiment that I've explained all this years ago. But getting back to your health, and then it's second class, last class, a blood clot to the system, and they get what they want and what for their soldiers, and they don't care about you, and everybody works on that. See, once it goes into commerce and it's okay, other people can exploit it, and they get to exploit it without any accountability. Well, except for the one that says in the Libra Code that if you go too far and you expose us, then we're going to have to come after you. So that we quell the natives and their, and their discontent because under international law, it's all understood. If the natives find out and they organize up the and they find out with the proper knowledge, they have the authority to, and ob obligation and duty and the right to throw us out. And when they don't, we get to thump on them. We get to, do, we get to enforce civil rights on them, everybody equally. Now, does that sound familiar, folks? Equal rights. Amazing. Don't even understand what they're talking about. So the, uh, then we have this uh, other thing. Uh, since I look at it from the military consequence, and not solely, again, it's an open continuum of potentials and possibilities based on however you construct the authority, which is actually the black and white authority that everyone works on that has the power to harm you, is the black and white. And however you, you correctly combine the law correctly oriented will bring you to different potentials of what is the condition on you. What, there's multiple dimensions to this war. Le levels and dimensions. And we're not talking esoterically here. We are at one level, but that's not what I'm... I, haven't, I can't get you all to move from this stuff in physical to, to get us into that spiritual side anyway, so I'm not even going to try. But that's playing out the whole... That's playing out entirely, uh, all the time. And as I say that and get the military and thinking, I just... Uh, Solomon, you, you're in my thoughts. Uh, thank you very much. I get a message from Grimner a couple weeks ago. I uh, forgot to mention that, but in a way I wanted to keep it... I wanted to keep some distance. don't know what's going on. Appreciate that you called in and let us know you you were okay then. I hope everything's fine. But here's the the military consequence globally, folks. These people are are well versed in how to pull this off. And I came at it from the black and white reading the manual. The what you see is illegal. That's the manual. They're telling us exactly how this is working. And I try to come here to tell you in other ways that we have to approach it a different way. You still have to read the black and white, but our approach has to be different. Because we can't be lulled into the fact that that is an authority where we find something foreign to it and which is powerful enough to counter at least equally. I'd rather be in that condition than the one that have, have no word in my mouth and, and not, not have a place to cause a bit of any embarrassment at all. It's not coming out that, you know, the, the governments, we all say this, but they're big, they're big uh, money laundering systems. They're big rendering machines. You're the, I told you, they're the beast of burden in these judge, in these judge, uh, in these judicial conditions. It's not judicial at all. It's all, it's coming to the surface, but people don't quite know what to do with that. They just complain. But this is also indicative of what they say inside the statutes of what's going on. As I tell you, I keep refining what I understand, and I can now make, I can see why certain rules do what they do, and I can tell you at this point, except for like the sustainability stuff, that's that's like a whole different reality uh, in a way. That's just complete lawlessness. But within the context of what appears to be actual and lawful, there are constraints built in, and so somebody, even the occupier, knows how far they can go. Tells me 
there's an intelligence in there that knows exactly what's going on, which means that I can find it too, you can too, and I think that's a better place to work than just just complain and throw our hands up and literally do nothing or do everything wrong, and that's like doing nothing. Uh, continuing, though, a little bit on the health problems and what's going on, and when I read this next story, and the word assassins is in here, I was just thinking through the DOD story that I had just read, biologists turn eavesdropping viruses into bacterial assassins. These these findings are fascinating, just just fascinating. What people are, what these scientists or or whatever these researchers, whatever these searchers, whatever they are, the fascinating what they turn up, what the the, the, the wonder that that nature does and is. Uh, they find that uh, eve vi virus. This is a single cell. They didn't even think there was much to them. A virus, a single celled issue here that actually has a it senses communication. It, it senses the communication between its adversary. So when it starts to communicate in a certain way, it knows to attack, and it does attack. They, they've now researched and found this communication, this conversation going on that's intercepted by this uh, this uh, vir cre creation, and they're able now to de to target it. Okay, researchers have found a bacteria killing virus that can listen in a in on bacterial conversations. And, and then they made it attack diseases, including salmonella, E. coli, and, chlor and cholera. On the surface, that sounds cool, doesn't it? We can actually take this virus and educate it to go after certain things at certain times. That sounds really, really cool, but they did use the word bacteria and assassin and train, target it, educate it. This is supposed to be a single-celled, non-thinking thing. And all I can think of with the other story about DOD funding fast-stream stuff with that they needed soldiers, and then we understand the aerosol nature of things that they put in the air and every other type of thing, and then the, the binary and trinary weaponry that the DOD will produce. This story became terrifying. As I've told you before, they'll tell you all the cool things it'll do for you now, but what they don't tell you is all the stuff that you didn't think about that they're actually using because national security is all important. In your last class, you don't get that. But you could very well be the bacteria that they train something like this, the virus, to come after you at a cellular level. And so, okay, science fiction. I don't think so. You can believe so. But this is a notice to us that they're, the level of, inter, of understanding now they're getting on uh, natural systems. And uh, when I see the DOD gets fast-tracked to all these things and they don't have to uh, check out how harmful it is, and they got the exception to be able to harm you, this one takes on a whole other terrifying aspect that I, again, I'm not terrified. That's just what they're going to be able to do. We keep letting them do it. And uh, at some level... Like I keep saying, I'm coming to the end of my time. I don't have a, I only have a couple decades on this in this place. I'm, I'm hoping better for you all, but it's not looking good. And Generation Z, you better understand if you can, if you can ever find this broadcast, go back and see how they did it to you because it's there's something going to hold up, I believe. Well, until they they can take you out singularly, which they're working on. And that's what all this data, big data, and inter interference is. The Internet of Things, the surveillance state. They are. There's still a roadmap through that I don't know that they can actually stop you and Generation Z from stopping them. You're going to be told a whole bunch of nonsense. You'll be living in nonsense, and it's going to be like a fish. You're not going to question the water that you're in, but you're going to have to quit. You're going to have to have an insight. This word or the word of the people around you, your elders, the your friends that are just uh, becoming aware of the fact that you live in water. You live in a conditioned environment. It needs to have that question so that you can address it, because you're not really a fish. You may be in a school, you may be in that herd, you may be treated by the herd immunity condition, which is all this DOD fast tracking and all these um, these uh, um, these vaccines that don't have an antigen one in them, but are toxic to you to keep you in a condition of epigenetic change. You'll have to hear these words, if it's not for me, from somebody in the future. And you're going to have to break out of whatever prison you've been put in. And you're going to have to go back the way I've been telling you to start to assert yourself again if you have the opportunity. And my 
I mean, I feel, when I say that, I just, there's a sorrow that starts to come over me. I am hoping you have the chance, because it's looking so, um, we kind of use, use the word dystopian. It is coming to the point when there's not going to be much of that escape. You're, you're, when they understood, uh, what is it, Maslow's hierarchy of needs, that study was done to figure out your needs and what you will, what you will capitulate too quickly. And that is also then combined with a lot of other things. And, and and I say now I bring up the what the protocols of the elders of Zion. It's like a manual of your frailties. You hear any of this in the future and you're underneath this and you break through for a moment that says, hey, this is not right. There's going to be a way to backtrack through. That I've seen, I can still see it today. And I don't see how they're, they can't, again, when I see the intelligence of the psychopath, recognizing things that, that is recognizable to all men and women, and they only do go so far, and they rely on your ignorance or apathy, I recognize that there's some force in the world that does check everything, whatever, whether or not I can point, pinpoint it or identify it. And I'm going to have a, if I have a faith, it'll be a faith that you'll see it in the future, because those of us today didn't, didn't do it, notwithstanding what I've been trying to do for 10 years, informing everybody, it's it's just too much apparently, and uh, that's the sadness about about this. So we keep talking about the military consequence, of DOD, and the evidence is all around us about how we're being controlled. Another report comes right out to let us know Pentagon campaign to keep public in the dark. Now, why would they want to do that? What what is going on? Now you read the story and they talk about certain things, and I can see if everything was going right, I can see how. The classification of documents that haven't been classified before might be important if everything was going right. But when we're looking at the problem of a war power uh, imposition where the government is accepted and can harm you and they tell you you can be an enemy combatant and they can indefinitely hold you, and there's no, there's no judicial constraint. There's no Libra code on this condition anymore. You need to understand that this is a notice to us about uh, the worsening condition, and Trump is part of it. His decision is... Uh, on these pentagons keeping it secret you no longer can get information that was a, uh, used to be available the pentagon has always kept its share of secrets and for good reason and it's working toward a new level of opacity they'll call that transparency but it's you see right through it it's opacity in the fact that you're not going to see it opacity cla cla classifying all sorts of information that has been public in the past including the inspection grades of America's nuclear weapons infrastructure, records of Navy aviation accidents, and the Government Accountability Office assessments of Pentagon waste, the Defense Department has also stopped revealing public information the number of troops that is deployed in each theater of the war on terrorism. I won't read more. You're being closed off of what the very thing that's against you can tell you. You're being blinded to even more information. And it seems plausible, but like I say, it's only actually plausible where things are going right and they're not actually subverting your life. I mean, certainly you would need to know about the Pentagon waste. I understand what they're doing about that waste, but it's not the waste that's the problem. It's that is the waste that you look into and other people can say, well, that waste might be going somewhere else. Because it's not really waste. It's cooking the books, but it's doing something else. What? Under national security. The, the umbrella dis destruction of every of every of our lives because no one's checked it and it might be valid but we can't tell and they're going to make it even harder so here's the title again the Pentagon campaign to keep the public in the dark yeah the, the title may be a, a subjective I'm telling you that's notice to us it's good enough for me that this is exactly the next phase going in is they're taking away disclosure in a number of different different areas my uh, view, based on my reading of black and white and history of how it applies all together and how they continue to do it, and it's predictable, so that other, it's another proof on its own, is they're doing, they're doing this on purpose. It's not an accident, and it's not for the reason they're telling you. And it's just to keep uh, slowly, as I keep telling you, Generation Z. By the time we get to Generation Z, or maybe one, bef one generation so-called behind that, there's not much available to you to get your, your, get your hands around. Now, you do not care. Who cares about all this stuff? Let them, let them keep it secret, right? Well, it's fine if everything's going fine, but it's not going fine. And if you listen to my voice and you have a complaint, you know it's not going fine. 
Whether you do something or not, you know it's not going fine. And so here we have another thing. They're telling you, why? I keep telling you, you live underneath this military consequence. Why would the Pentagon be concerned about the public anyway? Are they supposed to be looking outwardly to protect us, aren't they? Aren't they? Well, I don't think so. I think they're looking at the so-called public because they're actually looking, been, been looking inwards. And these, uh, the, the opening story about two U.S. police doing Russian roulette. I guess the Russians did that too, right? Putin was all over that one. Russian roulette, only with a modified twist, shows you this fact. I, mean, this is, I don't know how many more, how many more things we get to come around. But it's not something, okay, now we know that, okay, great, and we go to sleep. This is the condition of your life. It, it affects you everywhere. And one day it may affect you terminally. Remember, life is a terminal event. It truly, really, there's no, no question as to how the bad works. I mean, it's just, why is that a question? It's terminal. It's just, it's just how, how well are you going to go downhill from the beginning? So we move from the military consequence, uh, and then remember that's the military, and I'm telling you under indefinite detention, that's the civil executive. Because the military still looks at the Libra Code when they do the military thing. The civil implementation doesn't care. And that's why I tell you, you don't have a country anymore. You can disagree with me, you can say, oh, look at all, what about this, what about, go look at the function. Go look at what doesn't function. Go look at what was required to function. Be careful that you don't disregard the inherent powers not being functioning. And then you, when you get compile all that, come back and tell me what you find or what you think you found. And then we'll weigh, we'll weigh together the findings and I'll tell you whether or not you found enough and whether or not you can find some more. And I say that not out of arrogance. I have not found enough people, uh, many people that have a complete, uh, they have nice, deep, the researches, but they're not comprehensive enough, and that seems to lead us down very narrow, you know, blinded views that we could open up even further. And again, the more you see, it's not even a negative to me. It's just what is. It's negative only because of the consequence to us. And we have the ability and power to flip that right around if we were just do it. But uh, moving on, we have so that's the Pentagon. That's the effect of the civil, uh, and that's the effect of the executive. And we move into the the uh, legislative. And I told you last week, I said, uh, you know, this young woman that got in uh, from the East Coast that got elected into, I think it's the Congress here. Uh, you know, she's she got. Th this is the example of what's coming in to run the caucusocracy, and this is what we're allowing in uh, to run that caucusocracy. And uh, I would tame a title right after I made the, the comment last week, and I'll hold off of that comment here. Uh, for a moment, it says uh, Ocasio Cortez gives zero F asterisk CKS claims world will end in 12 years. U.S. should pay represent, rep reparations to quote heal. So this is that young congresswoman now who was voted in by you all over there for whatever reason. Uh, complete. Well, I don't, I, I'm I just can't understand, folks. But uh, I did have a comment about that, and the way that, that the title came out, what she said, what comes out of her mouth, what I said to you before, what we allow into the caucusocracy, the psychopaths that eventually, I, my comment observation was that, was see what happens when they hatch too soon. This is what, they, what we're getting when you have people that are completely incompetent in, in life getting into places for whatever reason to make these decisions. And this is the fast track into the stinking abyss. And it's beyond me, uh, probably beyond each one of us, because the people that are in that area that got her in are the ones that wanted her in. This is your future. But I guess your future ends in 12 years by her. And why would you pay 12 uh, uh, pay reparations if your future ends in 12 years. I don't know, but she has zero F asterisk CKs about the whole thing. 
and she's your representative, folks, or she's a part of a body of representatives. Now, I'll, I'll just see what happens here when they hatch too soon, folks. That's all of you all. It's like when I looked at I realized when I was 18, supposed to be an adult, the insect that I is, I realized I wasn't prepared. I, I realized as I went through life and started to get better and better, it wasn't until about 24 and 25 I started to get a better, more rounded application of things that I could start to make decisions at 25. And even then, well, by 32, I knew I knew everything. But so it was a fast it was a fast rise to the pinnacle of my life, as we will and we will do. At 32, you know it all, and you know some good stuff, and you and you're pretty active. And I don't want to de de denigrate the knowledge that we have at, at the age of 32, but we're not done yet. We're not actually done yet. And I know this society's not done yet because I'm here looking at a bunch of people that are older than me and younger than me and we're supposed to be reaching the pinnacle of our experience and our observations and we, we are dysfunctional. But when you, when you, when they hatch too soon, this is the kind of statements you get out of them and there's going to be more folks. I don't know what else to tell you. And they're gaining a power and they're gaining the, they're gaining the momentum because of all y'all that should be opposite, be op, be, um, Stopping that are not stepping up in the proper ways. You're you're becoming divisive even within yourself. You don't understand the condition that's going on, and it's not just her. This whole thing is being driven. It's a plan to be driven, and you need to understand the rudiments of it before you're ever going to stop it. And if you don't, we're just going to see this stuff come on us. And if you don't, you don't think it's all integrated. Uh, the next, you know, remember, this Ocasio is a. I, uh, if I I've heard it described as a socialist. Uh, rabid socialist communist uh, in, in her in her what she presents she's completely within sustainability and uh, completely in uh, the destroying you all to make you all equal taking your wealth and giving it to somebody else who may or may not be worthy of it and that reminded me of this next what came up in the in the in the feed right after that remember who is else supporting sustainable development? Who is uh, social justice, equitable sharing, uh, prosperity that isn't uh, austerity? Austerity, folks. What a religion here, huh? But uh, the Pope, so-called. And what I found fascinating was this, this story came up right after that other story. And it says, Pope Francis unveils new click-to-pray app. Click to Pray app. The Holy Father launched an app called Click to Pray and on Sunday that will allow the world's 1.3 billion Roman Catholics to join him in prayer. What a promotion. The pontiff has on a profile on the Android and iOS app that shows Catholics around the globe what he's currently praying for. Users can then click an icon to indicate that they've prayed with him. Thousands of faithful watch Sunday as Francis, who once said he was a disaster with technology, showed the app on the tablet at his weekly address in St. Peter's Square. Did I do it? Francis asked, an aide after swiping a tablet. Click to pray, folks. If, if you don't think that globalism and these iPhones, these, this technology, isn't setting you up. You click to pray, and if you don't, what happens, folks? Remember social credit? Remember that, folks? Remember the social credit? You think that's going to be tied in with that at all? Maybe, you think? Is it? Is it? Is the Pope in on it, folks? Click to pray. Yeah, they're praying on the faithful, folks, sustainably, no less. This is the global credit system. It's a debtor's servitude. They package it up in very cool ways. But it's here again. It's uh, one of the premier uh, examples in the world for it, in the Pope. Billions, billions of people, folks. Billion. Billion plus. Click to pray. And if you don't, what happens to your social credit eventually here, folks? Remember, it's sustainable. That's global. It's not local to you either. But here it is. They roll it out. They roll out the sustainability, the same thing that Ocasio is going to be promoting. And, I mean, to your death. I mean, she, this lady is just really, she's hatched way too soon. 
and a lot of them have, but uh, they don't know it, and you tell them that, and they get triggered, and they, then they have the force of the other ones that are not hatched, uh, that hatch too soon. They escape the uh, the abortion that uh, that that others have so now suffered in New York and will be suffering. That you can be now be aborted the day before, right? The day before you're supposed to be born. How, where have we gone as a society? For this? How repug? I don't even know the words for all this, but this is now legal. And remember, Clint Richardson's again. He'll tell you about his interpretation of the Roe versus Wade. Like I have my own, and we got together. We explained it. He went a little bit further. It's Roe versus Wade. But Ginsburg, who now everyone's questioning where she's been, and we don't know if she's dead or not. I don't know. I don't care. She's just another. She's just another bar member. But same, her interpretation was that this was supposed to be a way to, to control blacks, was, was the law. She thought that's what it was, and she's on record for that. But people put her up on a pedestal, same people that will take away all your rights and, and, and want to murder babies the day before they're supposed to be born, and it's legal. Legal, not law. There's certainly no morals to this. Really sickening. This is the new world, folks, and it's being agreeable. This is agreeable to people. I don't know where that comes from, but this is what you're up against. If there's anybody, any moral thinking people, these are the same people that don't care, see, that you're a he or a she, because you're not even anything until they have to recognize you. Remember, this is the big serious problem when I was telling you about the Supreme Court making distinctions of when you're a person when they claim that you have a liability on you even as an infant uh, or not this is how they adjust stuff this is how they start to do things that are just not correct but they're legal and that was done through the rule of law not law it's someone's interpretation of that and anyway, it's despicable what we're allowing and it's the Casio's on the front end of all that and they don't care they don't care that you're a he or a she this is the big problem, and I tell you, that's a that's a, a non-starting argument within legal, because a person has no gender. And this is why, at first, immediately how I can tell you, this is a false a, a false um, outcome, that they want to make some new, get your mind to think that there's something else they have to say. And we see this he-she nonsense coming up in the, now, uh, the same type of people. California State Senate Committee banned saying he and she. Think about what's going on here. In fact, the one who did that tried to make talk about her uh, her, her teacher uh, and referred to uh, the teacher as a her and got chastised by the people in the meeting that she couldn't say sh her, she had to say them. So now you're always a group. They're totally controlling your, your, your language. That means they're con totally controlling your mind. There's going to be some of us, like myself, I could care less about all that. You, I, was, I was brought into the world to believe there's a gender. If you want to make a political uh, statement about that, go, go, go tell it to someone who cares. See, I already addressed that behind, this, behind the woodshed. I told you, because they went to it, and it's proper now to put a Z before the he or she, to make your statements better than going to they or them when you're talking about someone, that they said to put a Z in front of he, the pronoun he, or the pronoun Z, a she. Uh, I said just make it the it they're talking to. That's a person. It has no gender. And put a Z in front of it to make a pronoun uh, grammatically correct for the triggered among us. And we call, we'll be dealing with zits from now on. I've talked about this before on a broadcast. It's now coming into a, a, a legislature near you in California. You can't say he or she, they say. A colleague of mine was talking about he got a little bit uh, chastised for using the word, the term girl for a 22-year-old who was dressing down the commissioners and destroying a commissioner's power in a meeting uh, that was trying to impose, uh, through this alternative dispute resolution condition, uh, trying to destroy the county's power. He referred to as a girl, and there's some uh, liberal who took offense that she's not a girl, she's a woman. Well, that was interesting because that's still gender. And my, my colleague tells me, he said, well, when she grows up to know that to stop harming people, and she's, uh, from my perspective, being that he's an older guy, 
Yes, well, he says that uh, she, from my perspective, she's a girl. And when she learns how not to harm people, maybe she'll become a woman. But my problem with what you just said is that you focus on that instead of the condition, the subject matter that's harming you. And so in that little example, in what I just retold you, you see how these people will take and focus on something completely really wrong in a way and irrelevant and insults the, the one who has actually do, experienced it as well to protect someone who's not even in the room for the protection that's not needed so that they don't need to address the real thing that they need to be addressing. Is this alternative dispute problem? This is ingrained in people. And this woman that he was talking to wasn't young either. So, again, as I said, the baby boomer generation may have failed. And may have failed the rest of us, uh, them, uh, us going down now and younger until the last generation can be shown that they have something to remember and act against. So California, you know, really build a wall around that place. Uh, he and she cannot be said in uh, the Senate. So they're they're taking your right of free speech, aren't they? And they see nothing wrong with it. Because you're privileged, you know. And so this starts to be built into this system. The Pope, you pray to click. Well, you click to say, you're going to say click to, to support the government uh, in, the, in the state of California. Wherever you're going to get this app, it's not going to be the, the Pope's click to pray. They're praying on everybody, so everybody's going to be prayed upon. And you're going to be almost getting to the point where if you don't go at noon Pacific to go say you, you like the government instead of the guy behind the woodshed, you're going to have a demerit against your social credit. And as your credit goes down and your debt goes up, you're going to be identified and targeted. And if you think I was telling you about China being pivoting to China was was different than what they were telling you in the military context is what they wanted you to think. The military is global, so it's not something you have to even focus on. What are they doing with it? Well, they're turning to turn to, to China because of the financial construct that's coming, the digital construct that's coming, the invisible transparent cage. And the policies and the working policies are coming out of China. We now see that, as I've been telling you. Uh, this is now we talk about the tracking and tracing, and you say you don't you don't have a thing to say that you don't do anything illegal. It's not going to be about what's illegal. It's about what it if it insults someone who's made this rule like you can't say he or she. China court Chinese court. You don't think the judiciary is involved in this? Presents app tracking nearby deadbeat debtors with a map of shame. The government court, the judiciary over there in China, says if we have a judgment that we put against you, and you know that 98% of you that's seen the prosecutor in the United States of America know there's a conviction, if you think there's justice, Chinese court presents an app. The court itself presents an app tracking deadbeat debtors. You want to talk about shared debt, folks, and prosperity under the international rule? Better start putting this together. This is coming to an app near you. The People's Court of China's Haibai province has introduced a new app which identifies and even maps the location of people dodging their debts to help create a socially credible environment. The program has been described as a map of deadbeat debtors, revealing their financial information and exact location to nearby peers. If you don't think you're into shared prosperity and shared debt, nearby peers, peer, you, want a, you want a jury of your peers? Here it comes, folks. The app brings snitching on your neighbors into the 21st century, making it simple and convenient to report those with outstanding financial obligations to the authorities. Neighborhood watch come to ring a bell in some of you minds, folks. According to China Daily, a news service run by the Communist Party of China, the app will show if someone with bad credit is within 500 meters, making it easier for citizens to quote blow whistle blow on debtors capable of paying their debts. Close quote. Now, how are you presumed to be capable? That was another fascinating thing that came to my mind. Enough said. Folks, it's, it's the socially credible environment is what you will be imposed with. You, won't, you don't have a say here. So let's move from really quickly, I don't do nothing wrong. Yes, you do. You're presumed to do something wrong. If you're not engaged and part of the herd, you're an outlaw, an out-legal actually, 
and you're going to be uh, you're going to be tracked down essentially. Remember, you make a perturbation in the field when you don't have this stuff that I, res that I talked to you before about. You don't you don't you say he or she and that gets recorded in the in the phone. You're going to do, get another demerit, folks. This is happening in California. Remember what I just told you about the he and she nonsense. Just call it, I'm just focused, I've been telling you folks, you've got to come up with another word in your mouth, you call it and you can defend your position, call them all zits. That's the proper grammatical form of degenderizing a pronoun, putting a Z in front of it, but we're dealing with a non-identifiable thing that's an it, isn't it? We're dealing with big pus pocket boils rising to the top and running your life. Everything you deal with as a pronoun is going to be a zit. How's that? Try it. Might work better than he or she in a demerit on your app as they prey on you, the relig government religions that are out there, all government religions. Deadbeat debtors. Well, you don't know what you're going to be a debtor to relative to the social policies of the new uh, treachery, the new tyranny. And if you don't think that I've been telling you about all this stuff tracking you down, and in this case, again, they tell you the good stuff. A, a guy who was really a bad criminal got caught using technology. Great, but that's not what they're going to use it when they come against you. It could be just as much as wanting to find out and weed down all those people they want to control that we don't want people to get debt in uh, 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 contracts for for loans in the, in, or, or houses in society. You don't know what the policy is going to be that you're going to become in violation of. And not that you think, you oh, I'm not going to do this and I'm not going to do that. Someone all needs, someone has to hear you and make a report now, folks. Bicycle riding hitman convicted with Garmin GPS watch location data. The Internet of Things, folks. No, it's great. They caught a they caught a homicidal cycler. I don't I don't know if I what what else can I say about that? That's a cool thing, right? Well, there's the notice. Your GPS on your all your what are your phones, right? I would talk about your phones. Well, this is a watch. A homicidal cycling and running fanatic known as, for his meticulous nature in tracking his victims has been undone by location data from his Garmin and GPS watch. Do you think your phone is a meticulous tracker? You think it would be 500 meters around somebody and associate with that one by presumption, folks? Because you're presumed to know that the other guy is able to pay what he's not paying? You understand the world you're being brought into, and you're saying nothing to it. I don't, again, okay, digital technology captured a bad guy, or alleged bad guy, I don't know. I think they actually proved that he was. They took cameras, <laughs> and they tracked him down, and the GPS put him there, and they got all enough, and they had the evidence, and so they, let's just say that they convicted a bit. They got, they got a bad guy. Then you have to understand that they're going to be getting people that are just offenses to them. And if you haven't looked out and seen this liberal mindset like these Ocasio's coming out to want to subpoena you to Congress because she don't like you, you're missing how they're going to move this against most everybody. And they're doing it in a place like China, as I've told you. It's the it's the it's their pioneer police state for the global implementation. If they can do it in China, your location and a population in your country is not big enough to, to even be a, 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 a road bump, a speed bump in their plans. Remember, they got, China's got a half of their population. is three times the population of the United States they could care less about having to deal with because it threatens them. That's partly why they're bringing all this on. And you have been determined in the United States of America to be, in all the rule of law countries, to be a threat to your own co countries. And the United States knows that by the, uh, the NDAA, uh, the P Patriot Act, the fact that you're presumed to be an enemy combatant, the fact that you can be uh, bureaucratically detained indefinitely, and a whole bunch of other things since then, folks. I mean, it's on and on and on. And so we go on with the big data, and I told you this big data is going to be worse than really the government. Because ultimately, you figure the government really is has other things to do, except when it ties into the, the system, and they can get public-private partnerships to do their bidding. And they make in these private partnerships, they can make so-called money and raise the bottom line of a corporation that's amoral. It's completely in the capitalistic system, but it's not really capitalism because it's all debt system. Everything's in debt. You keep tying all these things together, you see this thing just kind of draws itself together. 
and you can be a part of it, and that's how you get into this. And this is how this one's going to work, that, that the big data meets big government, new IRS spy software. You got an app to prey on you from the Pope, and the IRS is going to prey on you uh, now uh, with uh, their own software. It's, it's Again, notice to us what's going on. One of the reasons identified theft is considered by the Treasury Inspector General for his tax administration to be the crime of the century is because of the IRS. The Internal Revenue Service makes growing demands on, for information about people's businesses and private lives every day. Now, I'm going to focus on something here about that and is conjunctive. Once you get the business, then your private life is part of that. And that's how they do this thing. It's the same thing as a driver, a commercial driver, which you all are with a driver's license because that's the authority of the subject matter. It's all in commerce. And commerce is a federal thing. So if, even if it says state, it's not state either. But uh, here we have a in the records of the state, your driver's state driver's license has also a second part that's your private time. And this is how they combine. I see it right here in this phrase. Even in this article, this, I don't know the guy's knowledge about how this works, but it says right here, the businesses and private lives. So you have a business, you, your private life gets sucked up to this, and this is how they do this. But growing demands for information about people's businesses, there's your commerce connection, and you haven't figured out how to not have a business and still function, and then defend that against that, like we have, I told you about your licenses. Your licenses are regulable trade occupations and professions, and this thing, just this story, this uh, uh, detail just came up here recently, another thing coming on, like gun permits, well, permission is a license. That is for a trade occupation or profession. I've talked to you about weeks ago. What about your fundamental right to bear, keep and bear arms as a trade occupation and profession? Shows you they have no way to bring this into the context of an administrative res restraint, and yet you'll allow it. Same thing here. Your business is a trade occupation or profession that you don't have an alternative in the word in your mouth about how what it is and create your own individual thing, but that sucks your so-called private life in, and the IRS wants to know about you, and there's no such thing of as personal privacy. Dates. And the, part, the point about that statement is personal is the civic attachment, and it is, it's public. There's nothing private about that. They don't explain that in this article. But when you read, I read the article, that's how my mind, my mind works that way. There's no such thing as a personal privacy these days. I say, no, duh, because you forgot that the word personal isn't private. It's public. It's uh, so the man or, a, or an entity with a civic obligation. And the entity typically is made and born under the laws of the state, which is the servitude, making the civil and civic connection, which is bringing you into the, a millstone around your neck. And you do that by your applications or whatever. We're not talking about common law. You can't go around murdering people and then claim to be outside the law. That's common. That's the actual common law. But we're talking about this legalism stuff. So trade, occupa trade occupation or profession, and they give you license, permission, certifications. Think about your certificate of title. It's all in commerce, folks. It's how they do it. And then your private life gets brought into this. The IRS sends citizens a so-called Privacy Act notice in all of its mailings uh, and all in all in all its mailings is a farce. Is it, folks? If they know your address, they've determined that you're a person liable for the tax. They have to send you the notice. Well, I've asked you to ask if that ever happens. If you don't do it, they don't send you the notice, right? I mean, that anybody who doesn't have that doesn't get that notice, right? There it is. If they get the notice, your first question, that's a notice that you're now been attached. You need to send them that notice back. Is When did you give me the due process required under the probable cause you have to believe I'm a person liable for the tax, for this notice? That's right out of the tax code, folks. Do I argue the tax code? No. I just go, go for the due process first. Doesn't, the tax code doesn't apply until they bring me into a person liable and explain what my taxable liability is and tell me where to keep, what records to keep and the books to keep and, and where. And then give me the notice that I'm going to be required to submit all that. If I haven't gotten that notice, why would I receive a notice, uh, a Privacy Act notice? So there's a lot of misinformation that comes through a lot of these things the way I see this stuff. But this is coming down to, you people uh, will accept a lot of this thing without the first objection. And it's coming into the digital realm. There, Wherever this digital realm goes, there's going to be pieces of data. And they're telling you today the IRS is involved and interested in all of it. 
just being you know involved starts to get the process. And you still, I keep trying to tell you how you keep yourself, you're in it but not of it, folks. I guess that's what comes to mind to tell you. You really have to understand and learn that thing. We're told what it's about. We're told about it. Am I telling you that you're going to be victorious because you start to assert this? Well, likely not because they want to take you out eventually, but you don't want to walk in the wrong way. You want to wake, make sure that you're sitting with the record that shows they've never provided the, what was their duty and obligation to provide in the first instance. Why would I expect a notice if I wasn't presumed or, or determined by my acquiescence or my own hand in, in, in admitting in the filings? Why would I get a Privacy Act notice if I wasn't involved in that? And if I got one and I wasn't properly identified, that's like a defamation and then a felony because now you're mischaracterizing me for the purpose of what? Those civil rights that they have the right to take you from, or take from you. Those extortions, those coercions. And so we're back to what? We're back to looking at, we're almost doing a long form uh, quo warranto. What's your warrant to come after me without the due process that declared all the other things that for this broadcast I just explained just a few minutes ago? I don't want to repeat it. You go back and rebrush the, the file and, and hear, hear what I said. And there's more. You just, there's all kinds of stuff. That is an old thought about mine. I don't even deal with this stuff anymore. But anyway, here's the, the point is that the digital technology, the big data is moving in to help the government to come after people. And they're going to come after people in, uh, that are ignorant of the fact that they, well, may or may not. I can't even predict each one of your uh, obligations. But I can tell you that if you didn't make a con communication and they haven't contacted you to give a meeting and the due process that the commissioner found a, a, an action, um, a liable activity, and you, uh, then I don't know what, what to say more. That's the first line of defense, if it's a defense at all. It's really just making sure that they didn't violate you wrongfully at the very first part. And there's a whole other set of stuff here. I can't even talk to them again. I can't get to everything. I just kind of pointed out, if you're not to the point where you understood that, Maybe you need to go read some more and figure out how to how that works. What I just said, it's there to be seen. And you, and okay, so this is all about commerce and all about the servitude. And it's really in, engaging in the products of the government that are all you call fiat. And you keep in the bank accounts and the derivative, all that stuff you get involved in is all the things the IRS is interested in. All the things that are these trade, occupation, and professions that are regulable by them that uses all this, these systems and these instruments and products is regulable by them. So until you start figuring out where what isn't regulable by them and work there, uh, we're gonna we're, we're far away from uh, even under, beginning to understand. But within the big data realm and the ability to get data, uh, and I think I uh, actually heard this also uh, reported on the Freakers Ball. Wow, fancy that web ad giant Google to block ad blockers in Chrome for safety apparently. Well, who's, it's the government's safety, folks, is what they're, they're going to do it. They want to, they want your data. They don't want you to block the ads. They don't want you to interfere with commerce. And so they're given carte blanche to do this stuff and interfere. They're a private company that's working in tandem with the government that even has fast tracking, I would assume. And I think they work underneath the, they'll be coming in underneath the war powers as well. If they aren't already there, it's coming. I, I don't know what else to say. I see the, the uh, I see at least the, Telltale signs that it's already in function, but if, if in notice it's there, uh, that the Google doesn't want you to block out what makes them revenue and or gives their tracking ability on where you've been. And so you continue to use Google products and Google Chrome or the Chromium base that Google Chrome is based on, and you can expect to have these things ripped from you and re controlled and regulated and whatever all what. Here's the news, folks. Google's involved. They don't, again, they removed don't be evil for a reason. Uh, I think they got, maybe got embarrassed. They knew it was a lie up front, but that's neither here nor there. Google then, all we, now we talk about how close and fast tracking things go and special favors with the governments that implement the big data, the thing that gets surveillance state, the controllers of it. Uh, so Google secretly also pushed feds to let them punish disgruntled workers. Well, pains, punishments, and penalties is your civil rights, folks. So, uh, to my mind, that title tells me they got their way. Google employees have made headlines in recent months and for coordinating internal campaigns against evil corporate projects, such as their work on China's Dragonfly data collection search engine and the secret military drone AI project, secret military drone 
by AI project that at least a dozen people's quiddo, people quiddo, employees, excuse me, employees, not people, but employees, the master-slave relationship, voluntary slaves, quit, which is good. They have their, they have that right to do that. They get rid of that servitude. Uh, but anyway. The AI drone work, military no less, dubbed Project Maven. Now, two witnesses of a fact of a military consequence has to be the fact. Used machine language to identify vehicles and other objects from drone footage, which the ultimate goal of enabling an automatic, automated detection and identification of objects in up to 38 categories. What category are you saying you don't do, folks, that you're so innocent? Including the ability to track individuals as they come and go from different locations. I don't need to read more. There's more to read. But Google, move, remove, don't be evil for a reason. I predicted they're already involved with the DOD. Here's the fact of the military consequence. If you don't think these people are evil, some of the employees are not liking it, but they don't understand their status. So the, what happens in this story? Google goes to the feds and says, hey, we need to be protected here. He urged the Trump administration for all the time thing you hear about Google not liking Trump and promoting Hillary. They go to the Trump's administration labor relations board to repeal an Obama-era restriction on punishing employees that use workplace email systems and coordinate protests. If you folks have any idea about these people are in different camps and really do anything to do a side and agenda, the only agenda they have is to make their corporation more profitable. That's not capitalism. And it can't be within the debt system. But these people are sidling up into the government. They're already here. I told you that DOD fast-tracking. They're going to the government, uh, to Trump, who they tried to get Hillary, and they don't care. But whatever advances their cause to go after the same employees, to remove the obstruction to them going after the same employees that use the email to promote that, 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 uh, that protest. And then other things. But you can read the story if you want. You need more proof. I don't know what more proof I needed. To me, it's again, these are just notices of the facts. You're being told to them. Whether you take note of them that way is all totally up to, well, what your interest is. They hope that you don't pay attention to this stuff. And I bring it up in order to show you this is going on. This is going on global connections. It's a military consequence. It has many layers. Financials, one of them. Look at what they're doing to Venezuela. Was the attack the finances and the monetary system, but weaken the people too, so they want to rise up. Now that's one of the levels. But they attack not military. Military is one of the levels. And so you see this. this Google is attached to the very same thing. They went to the federal government to overcome who you would thought they promoted in Obama against Trump. They went to Trump to say, listen, remove this. The slaves are rising up, and we need to stop. We need to quell this thing. Otherwise, it's going to interfere with our public-private partnership to serve the DOD. You want your drones? You better help us here. Spotting you from AI drones. Another story. Big Brother digital licenses. License plates coming to a state near you. Commerce, folks. You don't get, I guess maybe you get this, but you're not really responding to it. Michigan became the second in the country to roll out the world's first digital tri license plate. Now, I reported on the first one. Move it to Michigan. I told you it was expanding. This was on the hook. This is coming. And, and what was interesting here is they tell a little bit more about it. Now, we can go through the George Orwell response. I don't care about all that. That's exactly what they were telling you. This is what's happening. This is what's going on. You're going to go in and apply that thing. You're going to not argue about your right to use the road against their permit, your trade occupation and profession that you're not doing, but you said you did when you applied the application for such. And even with that, that license, you're not going in and say, hey, listen, you defrauded me and didn't disclose. That's what I did. I want to rescind my signature, and I want you to know, and I want to have you know, understand that you are infringing my right to use the road. And if you say no or you obstruct it, I'm going to move an equity suit to enjoin your alter, alter opinion counter to the law. What do you have to go? You have to go into the, the Bar Association's court to do that. But guess what? When you do it right, they don't answer. That's a default judgment. 
And what I found interesting in the discussion here is that digital display is kind of interesting. I wanted to do, I had a thought what I thought was a unique invention. It was a, a license plate holder, uh, I mean, a, a, some holder for a, a, um, a bumper sticker holder, but it also had the ability to uh, display, have a display. Well, not, not, when I thought about that, these things were, these displays weren't even part. It was like a new idea. It wasn't even available at the time I was thinking about it. Now they have these displays. What I was interested to see is that this license plate display now can display that you're a debtor. It can display whatever the information they want. It's attached to your, this vehicle that you call this motor vehicle. And they can put this big X across your plate at any time. And uh, that designates that you're not supposed to be on that road. I'd liken that to a big star, a yellow star on your chest. But anyway, you put a big, they put a big X on your license plate. You'd be going down the road. And your social credit goes down to nothing. All of a sudden, you don't get the right to drive. And then you have an immediate attachment to your plate, and it says X. You're not supposed to be here. X him out, and the cops come pick you up. But this is all tied to the same system, right? All the big data, all coming down on you and everything that you're all crickets to. I don't get it. And it's going to take a run-up. You're going to need to get the basic idea of what, at least what I've been saying, and then you're going to have to refine how you make the approach, and you're going to have to confront the object, confront the the, the corruption that sits there. And there's ways to do that. It's not. It's just a matter of doing it. It's not a matter of saying, oh, there's a wall I need to figure out how to, that's going to stop me. It's not really that way at all. These people are waiting to get caught, actually. But you're going to be quiet, as I see it. I don't know what else to say. Prove me wrong, folks. Uncle Sam wants your... Do you think it's going to... Now, they're going to scrutinize you down from above. They get your car license plate, X's, all this other stuff. Digital Internet of Things, the social credit. Going to prey on you, the social... This religion of the, of the government. Now, uncle Sam, your uncle, wants your DNA. The FBI's diabolical plan to create a nation of suspects. This is written by uh, John Whitehead. This is the guy a little bit, I have a little bit of trouble. He's an attorney. I have a little bit of trouble with the way he approaches it, but he's not tr approaching it wrong. It's just there's a, there's a subtlety here, a nuance that I don't appreciate, but uh, go with it, folks. You read his stuff? Read it. No one listens to me. Well, not no one. A few of you do. He, he tells you they're coming with a nation of suspects. Folks, you're already suspect. They just want the proof. And it goes through the story of here that reports about how you're, they're going to get your DNA, how they're working it out, how they have the Rapid DNA Act, how the laws, have you already read them, that the laws are there, you get arrested, you're going to give up some DNA if you don't believe it. What was that uh, reporter from Iran? It's actually an American citizen. What was her name? Hashemi? I mean, I really don't even like the way she's an announcer. It drives me. I can't handle her voice, but notwithstanding. She's just a journalist. She come to visit family. Uh, she got picked up underneath a alleged witness status and treated like a criminal. They brought her into jail to hold her for 10 days, and they booked her in, took her fingerprints, took a DNA swap uh, sample, and, and, and she said, well, you're not supposed, to, not supposed to take my DNA, and we take your DNA. So if you needed proof, that recent story tells you that's exactly what you'll do, even though you're not a criminal, folks. They just claim that she was a witness, that she had to be put before a grand jury to hear. If you think you can continue in your mind that I don't do anything wrong, folks, stop that. Stop it, please. At least admit you're, you're a walking target. You can be preyed upon. Do you think you're you're an atheist? No way. No way. Hey, anyway, I want to read the story here. They're getting a bet database. They got the act to do it. President Trump signed it. For all you MAGAs. Thank you, Van Meter. I look up down, look down to see you're listening. I I know. There's folks I know you're listening. Um this is some serious stuff. I, just, I try not to do anything more than to just tell you. I hope we get together and do better work. Uh, I don't know how to stop it all, but I can hear it. I can see it. I can anticipate it. And it's been rolling out. And I've been just barely in a, I've been surfing the tsunami as best I can all these years. Uh, the water, uh, it's getting kind of coming over my board here. I get these tabs. I get run down by There's just so much to talk about. 
But it's just target rich what's going against us, and we don't think that there's any place to stop it. And so thank you, that Van, uh, for that acknowledgement. Uh, police use DHS machines to create private database and DNA databases of suspicious people. Who do you think that is, folks? I read the he folks. I just read the headline. We can go read the story. You should. You have to read the story. You have to see how this rolls out. For me, it's just a redundancy. I've already told you it's coming. I've seen it in the books. I've seen it in the writings. I've seen it in what people say that are authorita, but they're working. The, they have the power to hurt you. And no one's checking that. And this was based in that Rapid DNA Act, a newly commercialized technology developed by the Department of Homeland Security, military folks, Science and Technology Di Directorate, addresses these challenges by creating, expediting, and testing the DNA that is the only biometric that can accurately verify from family relationships. They're not just after you. They're after your family. They're going to make their associations up. This technology can be used on the scene, on the scene of mass fatality events in refugee camps around the world. Well, do you know of a refugee camp sitting right there in the United States anywhere? Really? Well, maybe your prisons? Maybe the ones that we've been told is coming? Refugee camps around the world and at immigration offices. You think maybe Border Patrol, 120 miles away from every port, which means every international airport and the border, is going to have this power to come and make the uh, familial association, folks? Anyway, reading and all kinds of stuff here if you want to. Minimally trained police officers. Yeah, the ones that point guns at each other and do Russian Putin roulette, folks. I don't know what, I mean, I just, I'm so frustrated I start thinking about this. I'm so frustrated at one level, and I'm excited at another level because I know we can stop it, and then I'm just dismayed that no one's responding. Oh, no, we'll wait for the Second Amendment. We'll take them out. Yeah, well, DO, California DOJ releases first set of proposed ammunition sales regulations. Basically, CA, and this is just a tweet. I'm just reading for the tweet. Uh, they cite a cite the law. I'm just going to let you know there's like a PSA to y'all in California. If you didn't already know, you're all sitting on your tail thinking that your chat room is going to work and protect you. Yeah, you know, basically, CA, California, cooperating agencies look like there too. CA, gun owners are now forced to pay up every time they want to purchase a box of ammo. $19 for the first time, and we have a deal, dollar thereafter, then give all their personal information, personal, your business and private information, because you don't know how to tell them you're not the person that they presume you and defame you to be, and they fraudulently mischaracterize this, and submit, you slave, a, to a background check. Now, uh, lots of people have comments on this. Uh, the, lots of comments in this thread. I'll just send you the link. You can read it. You can go just look on the Internet. It's out there. Folks, be careful on dealing with this. They really want to come after you. No, you won't be able to go to Nevada and get it. They're going to keep checking. they got, I guess, already got a good stop of working on that. They have forever. Uh, they started to get amp up on the uh, agricultural stops as well. Uh, at any rate, uh, you now pay for your right to have and bear and keep on because none of you, None of you have done anything to stop this. I don't even know if it's really stoppable in, in a certain way. And that terrifies me a little bit. I see lots of people would rather just wait for the day they can be macho and blast their way out of the room and pre be free again instead of saying, wait, I'm not supposed to be in the room. And so, word to the wise here, folks. And so one of the options I think was still available, and when this gets us to self-reliance, is uh, I guess what's still open yet is uh, go ahead and learn to reload, folks. But the the guys with the dot in the, not in the barrel of the gun are having the day. They're having their way with you, notwithstanding the fact that what it is is uh, is, is is conditioning a fundamental right that I say if you don't see it yourself, I'll tell you so you understand the word is antecedent even the establishment of the United States government or the states. It happened. You're right happened before. It was acknowledged that you had the right to defend yourself against governments. And they are conditioning and pay, charging you for that right and 
tracking you, and the ones that have the ability, they're being tracked. That's a military uh, uh, response. They don't have the actual right to do that. But all y'all will talk about it. You'll complain about it, but you'll never do anything about it. And prove me wrong, folks. Change my mind, please. And for you little ones in Generation Z, I don't know. I really don't know. I don't know what to tell you. Uh, they're, and why would you? You're going to be all happy and maybe even not able to function. You'll be drooling on yourself. I hope not. I hope, hope there's somebody left in Generation Z that's not so, so retarded uh, and constrained by what official license does to everybody. Oh, here was what the story, I had it out of place. It was the, uh, could you be next, is what she's saying. Iranian news anchor detained in the U.S. warns of abuse of power. Okay, you've heard that behind the woodshed, but no one listens. Maybe they'll listen to this woman. Someone I can't, I literally, I can't listen. I don't like the way she presents the news, but the people like a lot of people like her, and she is one of the ones that found out what I've said behind the woodshed. You could be next. She's now saying it. If they're not going to listen here, listen to her. Protests took the to the streets in Washington, D.C. to decry the treatment of Marze Heshemi, an Iranian-American journalist and anchorwoman for Iran's press TV who was arrested and held without charge for several months, uh, for several days uh, early this month. And I wanted to point out something on this story. It seems inconsequential. Maybe you don't believe, you know, care. But listen very carefully for the details and where people get it wrong. She was not held. Everyone's making an issue of her not being held with charges. There are no charges when you're held as a assumed as a presumed witness to a grand jury. There aren't any charges. They have the right to hold you indefinitely until you go testify. And now we find out they can treat you like the criminal that I've been telling you they presume you to be. It just so happens she's Iranian American and they're going to target her politically as well. But we see the truth inside of these things as well, that I'm saying don't look through the hub Habib, uh, whatever she wears that they stole from her, just didn't recognize her religious, uh, her religion, didn't recognize her innocence, that she should have been treated like anybody else, given a hotel and then told to show up, which she says she would have if she had been told. She wasn't even told. But this is how you're being treated, and I think that she deserves some support. Not for what she who, what she believes, where she's at, but that she's a journalist who's an American and had no, who was innocent and was still treated like a criminal, and they got her DNA. They fabricate that you did something wrong, folks. This is another, we, I think if you look deeply, I think this is more of a, they use that trap instead of it being legitimate. Because she's been before four gen, grand, or three or four grand juries before, and I don't know what, they're not talking about why, because those are kind of secret. Secret courts, folks? The grand jury is the, the rubber stamp of the prosecutor? She's not having any charges. They just held her for being a potential witness and treated her like a criminal. And, and you think you're going to go out on saying, oh, I don't do anything wrong. She's doing nothing wrong, folks. And she's treated like a criminal. And they made a federal database out of her. And now they can track her wherever she goes. And they know who she is. And they know, and remember, Israel can make her DNA and put her anywhere. Is that what the kind of world you want to live in? I'm hoping not. I'm hoping you listen to some things I'm saying. Find something that really torques you a bit. Dig in, folks. It's a target-rich environment to clean a lot of this stuff up pretty quickly if we just started to do that. Thank you, Grimmer, for what you do in the Real Liberty Media. And, uh, oh, before I forget, there's a uh, maybe no one's <laughs> turned in by the end of this broadcast, but we got Donation Drive coming up in the month, uh, your annual Donation Drive fundraiser, as a as Vinny says, he thought it was fundraiser. It's a big fundraiser we have once a year to pay for the servers and the other services that Grimner puts through worldlibertymedia.com uh, to give you the archives and all that stuff. Uh, think again, Grimner. We'll start that up for next week. If you will, folks, donate. Uh, make sure we have enough people that can do this and keep this word going out and the other other hosts coming out uh, for as scant as the programs are. And uh, notwithstanding that, just uh, we'll get. You have a program you can bring it in on this network too. But we need to have those servers, and those will be a fundraiser next week. Thank you for all the everyone that's following and sharing and clicking and finding whatever and rebroadcasting. Appreciate it. And I'll be here next week. Tech diffs or nature willing. Well, that's another lesson. I hope with today's information you can take it to those that misbehave. From behind the woodshed, leaving his mark on the beast, this is Hal Anthony. 
Till next time, Journey with Purpose. Can of whoop ass feels like. Son, he just opened a whole case of whoop ass.